There's a lot going on with the lead up to the Kentucky Derby, and I want to get right into it. There have been an increase in the amount of prep races going on. And not only that, but the fields have been getting better with the increase in the prestige of some of the races. And not only that, but of course, the points awarded to the winners in terms of the uh, qualification for the Derby to get the amount of points that a horse needs to be in the top 20 uh, or thereabout because sometimes there's scratches or a horse that has the points but doesn't want to enter the Derby. And so this past weekend we saw the Louisiana Derby and the Sunland Derby and then there's a huge race coming up, the Florida Derby, um, which will be take place um, this upcoming Saturday. And after that we're about a month from the starter derby so i'll just get right into the recaps of those two races i'm going to focus a little bit on the louisiana derby um but i will mention the sunland derby again if you didn't get a chance to watch them i definitely would recommend going back watching the replay um seeing for yourself if there's a horse that catches your eye maybe going back and looking at the pedigree of them or their past performances i think is the best way um to kind of gauge your interest in them. So let's look at the Louisiana Derby. As I mentioned, the winner got 100 points. Uh, in effect, automatic qualification for the Derby. And even the second place finisher got 40, which is basically, again, automatic qualification. Um, and even the third and fourth got 20 and 10, which, depending on where you were, isn't bad. But uh, so, let's, so let's discuss the winner, Noble Indy, trained by Todd Pletcher. This was only, I believe, his second start in terms of what you might consider major races. The first two were, you know, maiden or uh, allowance. Um, Noble Indy, he comes from that great line, you know, the AP and D line, of course. Um, and last time out, there was hype with him, not just because of, you know, because of all the things we've mentioned. You know, the, he looked good in his first two races, even though they weren't significant fields. Um and then, of course, the pedigree, and then the trainer, Todd Pletcher. So he ran the uh, Risen Star, and he finished, which that was about a month ago, give or take. And he finished third in that race, and he didn't look bad, but he didn't. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't a huge fan of that race when it happened, to be honest. And I discussed that a little in the video. Um, but I didn't think he looked great. But to finish third, you know. Uh, in that race, the Risen Star, you know, it was good enough where it, you couldn't write him off by any stretch or say, oh, that was a damaging performance. You know, he can't come back from that or anything like that. Um, it was a, it was a respectable third. So for him to come back and win this Louisiana Derby and the way the race unfolded, it was a really exciting down to the last second, uh, just um, Noble Indy. He had one of these familiar stalking trips where he kind of sat in behind a long shot who had the lead and just kind of sat and sat, waited for that horse to fade, and then he kind of made his move. And then a lot of times when there's a horse that does that, then he just kind of coasts the rest of the way. We've seen that. But in this race, he got challenged, and he got challenged. And then that'll bring me to the second place finisher, who is Lone Sailor. Um, and... Um, Lone Sailor, there were definitely points, if you go back and watch it, or if you watched it live, where it looked like he was going to win the race, and that would have been a big win, but um, he didn't quite pull it out. So, those are the top two. I'm going to mention a few things about some of the other uh, horses that ran, but just for Noble Indy and Lone Sailor, well, let's start with Noble Indy. I don't think, you know, he'll almost definitely be in the Derby, because he got those 100 points, so unless... For some reason, they don't want to run him in the Derby. He'll be in the Derby. Um, I don't think, as at least as of right now, he'll be a top favorite in the sense of maybe, let's say, top four in terms of, the let's just say, the morning line odds. Um, but I do think he'll be in that top tier. So however you like to um, sort of 
rate that in your own mind in terms of favorites versus contenders, top tier, however you rank them. Um, he'll be in that top stature, but maybe not the top, top elite. That's, But it is still early. And, or it's relatively early. There's still time for things to move. But what I, the point of that is, is that he's not going to be a long shot in the derby either. You know, he's going to, he's going to have, um, he's going to have, He's gonna be a horse that people talk about. I'm. My guess is that a decent amount of people will, like I said, have him. I'd say probably in their top eight rankings. You know, in these up and if you look this week in the upcoming batch where people will put out their top ten or top fifteen, whatever. Um, so, but for Noble Indy to come back from that third place in the Risen Star and win this race again, he had to work for it in this race. It, I don't think that this was a great field if you look at it, but it was decent. There were decent horses that were in some big races and either won or performed well in some races. So I don't think, you know, this wasn't like a pushover field by any stretch. So well done to Noble Indy. And he's one of these horses that we definitely have to keep him in mind. And um, just... Continue to track him, track how he's doing in training, and, uh, you know, and congratulations to him and his team because that's a significant win to get the one in the Louisiana Derby. So second, as I mentioned, was Lone Sailor. And this is a horse where the thing, my kind of thinking in this is if you like Noble Indy, which I do, I think a lot of people will after the performance, I think you also kind of have to mention Lone Sailor and say, well, he was right there. So we kind of have to give him a shout out too. And if he uh, is in the Derby, maybe, you know, maybe he's a little bit of a long shot, but you know, if he could put in a performance like that, Hey, why not? I think a lot of people will probably go back and look at some of his past performances um, and see if there's anything there that they can uh, kind of help to explain this really good performance. I, I looked, he really doesn't have, you know, he ran in some decent races, but no huge performances or standout wins. Um, so, um, I'm just, you know, it'll be interesting to see if he does go into the Derby and what his odds would look like. You know, but again, to finish second in the Louisiana Derby in a pretty good field. And not only that, but they give Noble Indy all he could handle. Well done the Lone Sailor. So just a couple of last things I'll mention from the Louisiana Derby. Third was My Boy Jack. So My Boy Jack is a, has kind of cemented his spot as kind of like a deep closer, a horse that kind of comes on at the end. And he's, you know, he's a, one of these horses who, who has the trainer jockey team of the, the Sormo brothers, Keith and Kent Sormo. And a couple of years ago in the Derby, they had Exaggerator, who was a really good horse, and a similar style actually the deep closer who finished second in the derby um so I, i'm not sure that this horse is as talented as exaggerator you know you could pretty much say certainly that he's not but he finished first in the southwest uh which i think was his last time out that wasn't too long ago so that was a nice performance got some derby points there and then finished third here he was coming on really strong at the end one of those things where you could say, okay, if the race was a longer, you know, how would he have done? That's, you know, just conjecture. But, um, you know, in a 20 horse field derby, you know, it seems like people say this every year, but it's so true. You never know how the pace is going to turn out and you never know how some of the other horses are going to react to being just surrounded by 19 other horses. So a deep closer like this is always can always be attractive if he's in the starting gate on Derby Day, and again, this is an experienced team in terms of the Desormer brothers, so they're gonna know kind of you know what to do um, in terms of getting uh, him ready for the Derby. And I think again, if there's like a pace uh, meltdown, which can happen. You know, maybe it's not, maybe in the Derby, it's not as much of a threat, but the deep closer can be attractive in terms of betting scenarios. So this is one where I think you have to kind of, you definitely have to keep
keep him in mind. We'll see where uh, he points towards in terms of whether he'll make to the Derby or not. So last thing to mention with the Louisiana Derby was Bravazzo, who finished 8th in the Louisiana Derby. Really disappointing performance. Last time out, he had won the Raisin Star, which I mentioned earlier, which was the race that Nobelindi finished 3rd in. So th this is a disappointing performance from Bravazzo here. With that being said, um, if, it, if his team wants him to, he'll probably still have enough points. Or almost definitely will have enough points to make it into the Kentucky Derby. So... You know, if you can find excuses for him here and say, you know, just maybe it wasn't his day, whatever. Um, you know, I I don't love Bravazzo, but that, you know, he did beat Noble Indy in the Risen Star. So, um, you know, it's just, I did want to mention here because he's a likely derby horse. So, for him to finish eighth, that is disappointing. Okay, so that's the Louisiana Derby. Well done, the Noble Indy. And a pretty nice field. Not a great field, but there's definitely some other horses that I think we're going to have to, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, as we continue to roll along here. Okay, Sunland Derby, which was Sunday, uh, the day after the Louisiana Derby. I'm going to be a little bit quicker with this. This wasn't a 100-point race. I think the winner got 40. So um, still a pretty decent um point gather um the winner here was runaway ghost trained by todd fincher um so runaway ghost is the son of ghost sapper who was a pretty nice horse and has sired uh so, some decent uh horses for sure um you know he's not again this was this is wasn't a great field not a terrible field wasn't a great field but a really impressive performance from runaway ghost no matter who he was running against and I don't know if he's in the Derby. Hey, why not? Well done to him, you know, um, to come out of New Mexico here in the uh, Sunland Derby. And um, there's not. I don't really have a ton of uh, things to say other than if you actually go back and watch this race, it was a nice performance. So you have to give him credit for that. And just, you know, it's cool to see um, maybe a, a, a horse we weren't at this being in the Derby kind of being in there. And uh, he did run in the Low South Futurity, but he finished fifth. And that was only a five-horse field. It was a really good field, though. So you can't really fault him for finishing fifth in that sense. Um, and then I'll just also mention Dream Baby Dream, trained by Steve Asmussen, finished second in this race. Um, so that's the Sunland Derby. Again, go back and watch it because it was that it was a really nice performance from Runaway Ghost. I, I definitely was impressed. Again, not a great field, but still nice performance. So then, uh, I'll just give a quick look ahead here to the Florida Derby, which is really shaping up to be a really good field. Should be a great race and a really important race for a bunch of different reasons. So this will be the, the return of Audible. Audible, um, trained by Todd Pletcher. He last time out ran the Holy Bowl and was super impressive and very, very impressive winner of the Holy Bowl. And so, but he only has 10 points in terms of the uh, qualification for the Derby. So he needs to either win this race or finish second to be in the field. Um, you know, a third place might get him in. I'm not positive, but he does need a good performance here. And I think I, I'm definitely expecting a good performance from him. I really like him. Again, watch that Holy Bowl. He was incredibly impressive. So this is a big spot for him here. He, But he needs to continue to impress. And if he has a good showing here, he'll definitely be one of the favorites for the Derby, I think, for sure. Another horse going here is Catholic Boy. Uh, this is a really interesting horse. A um, lot of talent, for sure. Um... So he had a pretty decent two-year-old campaign and had a, again, decent amount of hype, but he came back earlier in the year and he ran into Sam F. Davis. Not a great performance. He finished second. So, you know, he didn't run terrible, but I think a lot of people were a little disappointed with him. Um, but he'll be in here and he's another one that needs the points. 
Um, so already that's a good feel. But then we move on. Promises fulfilled. Who won the Fountain of Youth? Really, and that was a good field in the Fountain of Youth. And um, so definitely, that's the third horse here that is making this a strong field. And also Strike Power, who finished second in the Fountain of Youth. And then I think it, the Florida Derby's, that's just four of them. But I think it's going to be like a 10, 11 horse field maybe. So uh, there's a ton of points on the line and a really strong field. I'll be, so I'll be paying close attention to those four horses. And this is another 100 pointer. And I think it's just going to be really exciting and important. And the whoever wins, I think, of course, they'll be in the Derby, but I think they'll potentially be in a strong spot to be a considered a top favorite for the Derby. So that'll wrap it up for um, today's video. It's exciting because not only with the Florida Derby, but I think over the next two weeks, give or take, two, three weeks, pretty much all of the top favorites will run one more time. Uh, so we're done to see all these horses out there, and it's exciting. Some of them will be running against each other, which makes it even more exciting because there's only so many uh, prep races left, and you know the horses need the points. So it's definitely exciting. And so Louisiana Derby, Sunland Derby this past weekend. Check those out. Farter Derby upcoming, and uh, we're. Uh, we're on the road to the Kentucky Derby. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it.